I have been a SOLIDWORKS user for years. I have had the SOLIDWORKS for Makers version for years. And there have been a lot of complaints about 3D experience SOLIDWORKS. So in this video, I just want to give a little bit of background on what 3D experience is. To understand the 3D experience version of SOLIDWORKS, first we have to talk about CATIA. And CATIA is a 3D CAD modeling program from Dassault Systems. CATIA is actually an initialism and it stands for Computer Aided Three Dimensional Interactive Application. And I'm not putting the picture on the right up for fun to mock it. I actually got started in CATIA version 3 and you can see what it looked like over on the right. It had quite the interface. So first off, you had a keyboard. Then there was that other device with eight different dials. And by using the different dials, you could pan and then zoom in and rotate the model on the screen. It was interesting. Also, there was a pad. We used to call it digging. I think that was short for digitizing and it allowed you to locate different points in the graphics area on the screen. And also there was this other panel with a whole bunch of different buttons and you would grab an overlay and you would put the overlay on top depending on which mode that you're in. For example, let's say that you're doing some sketching with points or something, you would put one set of commands over and that would allow you to execute different commands. And then maybe you were doing some stuff with surfaces. So you'd grab another overlay and you would have a different one for solids and a different one for drawings. So that's how the interface used to look like. And I have some fond memories of using CATIA back in the day. But anyhow, let's talk about CATIA's history. So it dates all the way back to 1982. That's when V1 came out. V3 came out in 1988, and I only bring up V3 because that is the version that I got started on at Martin Marietta back in the day. And it was a Boolean operator. It worked a little different. You created these different primitives, and in order to create geometry, you added and subtracted primitives from one another. And so with that Boolean operator, it used a kernel called Euclid. And so then in 1993, V4 came out. Then in V in 1998, V5 came out. And V5 was a major difference for CATIA. It had a brand new kernel, which was the Convergence Geometry Modeler. And so that was called CGM. That is the initialism. And it was a feature-based solid parametric modeler. That should sound familiar. Basically about 10 years, or excuse me, yeah, about 10 years after Pro Engineer came out as the first 3D solid feature-based parametric modeler, everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. And so CATIA switched their kernel over to that. And you had different kinds of files like a cat part or a cat product, which is like an assembly, or a cat drawing. Then in 2009, V6 came out. And V6 was a big difference because it still used the CGM kernel, but now CATIA was integrated with Anovia. Anovia is the Product Lifecycle Management or PLM solution. And so the cat files that you had in V5, your cat parts and your cat products and your cat drawings, all those went away. Now everything was just in the database. It was part of the database. You could export files in a 3D XML format, but you no longer had individual files in the database itself. It was sort of like, you know, everything was just together. Then in 2014 was the debut of 3D Experience, which is essentially V6 of CATIA combined with Anovia and Delmia with the 3D experience wrapper around it. One thing I want to mention about CATIA's history, this is one of the interesting things, with the different versions, you don't exactly have upward, cap upward compatibility 
or easy upward compatibility. So for example, if you're using V4 of Katia, well, you couldn't really take your database and migrate it up to V5 easily because you went from the Euclid kernel to the CGM kernel. And then if you are on V5, you would have a difficulty going to V6 because you no longer had cat parts, cat products, and cat drawings. Everything was just in the Anovia database. Now be aware they did make a sort of intermediate version v5-6 that allows you to work between katia v5 and v6 but it's uh just a really interesting approach to upwards compatibility but anyhow that's enough talk about katia what does this have to do with solidworks well solidworks first came out in 1995 and it was released by the solidworks company it was a 3D feature-based parametric modeler. And what made it special is that it was the first 3D CAD platform that was designed to work on Windows. That was groundbreaking. That was a big change. You no longer had to be on a Unix system. You no longer had to be on a workstation. You could be on a regular Windows computer and running CAD. And SolidWorks was a big hit when it first came out, and it got quickly bought out by Dassault, the same people who own Katia. And so everything was humming along in Dassault. You had Katia on one side, you had SolidWorks on the other side. There was no real path going from SolidWorks up to Katia, but everything worked out fine. Then in 2020, the 3D experience version of SolidWorks came out. And so this was about six years after the 3D experience of Katia came out. So let me show you why people get aggravated by this 3D experience version of SolidWorks. All right, here I am in SolidWorks. I have an assembly open. It looks like you are used to, you know, you've got your ribbon up at the top you have your nice graphics in the middle of the screen you have oh my goodness i was almost going to call it a model tree it's like a feature tree oh i'm 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 punching myself for forgetting what uh solidworks calls that but anyhow you've got your regular solidworks interface and over on the right i've got this panel open and here is the 3d experience panel inside of SOLIDWORKS. And so you've got your choices between me, you know, being yourself here, and you can also change over to company or to world. Here we have a bunch of different roles. And this is something that you find in 3D experience for Katia. Everyone has different roles. And so some of these I understand, 3D creator. Okay, yeah, I use SOLIDWORKS, I'm a 3D creator. And down here we have 3D SOLIDWORKS Professional, 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS Professional. Okay, I can understand what that is, but I don't understand this 3D Sculptor. Now I've also got this role over here as 3D Swimmer. I assume that Swimmer. I don't know what swimming has to do with using SOLIDWORKS or 3D Experience. Collaborative Industry Innovator. NC shop floor programmer. Okay, I can understand that. That makes sense to me. But also there's a role as a platform manager. So I've got all these different roles here. I don't understand it. Then there are various different cockpits that you have. I don't understand what a cockpit is. And I don't have any favorite apps or I haven't designated any favorite apps. But then there's also this other long list of apps here. And so... This is inside of SOLIDWORKS. For the most part, you can, you know, pretty much ignore that while you are in SOLIDWORKS and just keep on with your day doing what you need to do. So uh, one thing that was really annoying when the maker's version of SOLIDWORKS first got this 3D experience, you had to go to the web-based version of 3D experience in order to launch SOLIDWORKS, even though SOLIDWORKS was installed locally on your computer. Also, the way that it used to be up to a few months ago, 
Whenever you had a mandatory update of SolidWorks, you had to go to the web-based version and you would have to hunt around in there for wherever the hotfix was buried in order to be able to update your SolidWorks. But anyhow, if you are using SolidWorks Connected or SolidWorks for Makers, whatever you want to call it, these days, as it is now in 2025, the good news is you can largely ignore 3D experience. But let's talk about why you would want to ignore it. Okay, so this is the web-based version of 3D experience. First off, take a look at my URL. What the heck is that? One of the frustrating things about 3D experience is finding where you have to log in. I'm logged in over here because I logged in through SolidWorks itself. And so this opened up so I didn't have to hunt around for the login. But someone please explain this interface to me. There are some learning center videos in here. I haven't found any that really explain this 3D experience web-based version. I would actually take a class on the 3D experience web-based version just to understand everything that is in here. But here you can see the welcome. And then over on the left-hand side, they're very proud of this compass. And if I click on the compass, it collapses that left side panel. But let me click on it again. And just like we had in SolidWorks, I can change between me or the company and the world, whatever that does. I've got the different roles up at the top. Let me collapse those. Here are the different cockpits. Again, I don't understand cockpits, but I do want to talk about all the different apps. And so if you go through this list of apps, I remember I, I counted it one time and it's some ridiculous number. It is like 80 different apps inside of here. I don't know why I need them. I don't know why I would use them. And so we've got, you know, things in here like 3D Navigate. Actually, I can kind of understand that one. 3D Markup, I can understand that. But again, we've got 3D Swim Content. I don't know what swimming content. You have Bookmark Editors. Let me scroll down in the list some more. And so Calculator. Okay, I don't need, I don't understand why I need to access a calculator inside of 3D Experience. But I'll let you look through some of the other different ones here. Let me scroll down some more. And so you can see some of the other different apps that we have in here. So again, it's just unnecessary bloat added to SolidWorks. SolidWorks worked fine before. And speaking of SolidWorks, here is SolidWorks connected from this drop down list. Oops, this will actually end up launching SolidWorks for me, but this is where you can actually access the hot fixes that you need to as well. And this is where they used to force you to access them. But anyhow, before SolidWorks launches, let me wrap this up and just say, again, this is 3D experience for SolidWorks. I just don't understand it. And maybe that's me.